Hey yo, what is going on, viewers of the tube? My name is Tyler and I think this Onion newscast video is quite appropriate with all the celebrities getting COVID-19 tests while showing no symptoms at all. A tragedy averted today in Hollywood. Chart-topping singer and dream girl star Beyonce Knowles was walking down this stretch of sidewalk in Los Angeles yesterday when a stray shot from a nearby confrontation ricocheted down the block. Beyonce would almost certainly have been struck in the arm or shoulder but as luck would have it, a passerby was moving at just the right speed to intercept the bullet in its head. You know our golden spoon. It's time for Chico Crypto. Speaking of that golden spoon, that is something we need to dive into today. There are some people who have staked their way into the political rankings and are using their golden spoon to profit off of this economic collapse and push their way up the elite ladder. And in particular, it's one person who I have been exposing and exposing hard on this channel. They slime their way into Bitcoin and crypto with back the institutional BTC product with ties right back to Wall Street. I made video upon video showing that the backed warehouse isn't a warehouse. It's a place where your Bitcoin go to never be returned. In actuality, it's Wall Street's attempt to rehypothecate BTC through backed Bitcoins, inflating the supply upon the hard-coded 21 million, and effectively destroying BTC's massive use case against the dollar. Limited supply. All those videos are in the description if you want to check them out. Well, who is this person? It's Cool Kelly Loeffler, co-owner of Back, co-owner of the New York Stock Exchange and ICE, and now Georgia's newest senator. But what did she do? Well, she used her position as US senator and owner of the New York Stock Exchange to dump millions upon millions of dollars of stock before the crash. So let's dive into what Ms. Loeffler is accused of doing. January 24th, the Senate got a private briefing on the coronavirus and the effects it might have on the US economy. Even Kelly tweeted about it. Appreciate today's briefing from the president's top health officials on the novel coronavirus outbreak. These men and women are working around the clock to keep our country safe and healthy. I'm sure you did appreciate it, Kelly, because right after that, she dumped her first batch of stock. The first transaction was a sale of stock in the company Residio Technologies, valued between 50,000 and 100,000. As you can see here, the dump of Residio on the 24th. And since, the stock has collapsed, losing nearly 60% as of today. Well, that was just the beginning. There were 28 more stock transactions that Loeffler and her husband made through mid-February. Yes, we have to bring up her husband, Jeff Sprecher, the other owner of the New York Stock Exchange and ICE and the chairman of both. So the couple collectively, according to public records, liquidated between $1.2 million and $3.1 million worth of stock in the three weeks beginning on that January 24th day. But they also bought some stock. One of Loeffler's two purchases was stock worth between $100,000 and $250,000 in Citrix, a technology company that offers teleworking software. One of the biggest end user impacts we've had is a lot of people working remote. We've sent thin clients home for the bad weather days. So if there's bad weather, they can't drive into the office. They just fire on their thin client and start working from home. Hmm, kind of sounds like something that would take off during a pandemic, something you were briefed on. Which, yes, since it's low, it has grown from $92.54 to, as of yesterday, over $116, an over 25% increase. And you want to know what's really messed up? This Kelly Biznut, she gets on Twitter March 10th after another Senate briefing, not a good one, and reassures America that everything is okay. She tweets, concerned about coronavirus? Remember this, the consumer is strong, the economy is strong, and jobs are growing, which puts us in the best economic position to tackle COVID-19 and keep Americans safe. Update following meeting with Donald Trump and Steve Mnuchin, Snoochie Boochie. Snoochie Boochies. So let's hear what she had to say, not tweet. I wanted to give you an update on the coronavirus situation following a meeting today that we had it in the Senate with the president, the vice president and secretary Mnuchin. They shared with us some ways that they are approaching this uh, situation as it unfolds. First of all, I want to commend this administration, the president, the vice president for leading such a strong response. Everything from travel bans, travel advisories, to screening that's underway that has really slowed this uh, spreading to America. 
We talked in the meeting today about some additional responses that the administration is looking to take to make sure that consumers are protected, that we have all the medical testing that we need, and that the economy stays strong. The good news is the consumer is strong, the economy is strong, jobs are growing. Our president has done a fantastic job making sure that we're in the best position to manage through this situation. It's really important that we all take responsibility for washing our hands. Uh, I know I'm a frequent hand washer. I wash my hands even more now. I even wipe down my cell phone. Uh, just taking common sense protections. Yeah, she was saying the economy is super strong. Jobs are coming. Uh, her der der Kelly. Let's just look at the Dow since March 10th. Yeah, not strong, Missy. Well, the fallout has come for old Kelly. She's being hit hard right now, left and right. The Daily Beast dropped the story. Senator Kelly Loeffler jumped millions in stock after coronavirus briefing, which then Fox News brought Kelly on and grilled her about it. So, Senator, pardon me, you thought the government was prepared, yet shortly after that tweet that I just noted, you sold over a million dollars in stocks in your own personal portfolio before the market went down. Were you trading on inside information about what was coming? Well, I'm, I'm really glad you asked, Ed, because I do want to set the record straight. I've seen some of those stories, and it's absolutely false, and it could not be true. So if you actually look at the personal transaction reports that were filed, it notices at the bottom that I'm only informed of my transactions after they occur, several weeks. So certainly those transactions, okay. at least on my behalf, were a mix of buys and sells, very routine for my portfolio. Okay. And, um, you, know, you, you say they were routine, Senator pardon me, but uh, in t I mentioned the sales before stocks went down. They also purchased your third party advisors, Sitnix, as I understand, which is a teleconferencing company uh, with workers displaced now, given the crisis, teleconferencing companies are doing quite well. Who are these third party advisors? They seem to have a pretty good idea about where the market was headed. Well, certainly I'm not involved in the decisions around buying and selling. There's a range of uh, different decisions made every day with regard to my savings and 401k portfolios that I'm not involved in. And certainly, uh, like any other trade, you, you can't see into the future. I come out of the financial services industry yeah. where I have over 20 years of experience of dealing and complying with very strict standards right. around material non-public information. I'm the only chartered financial analyst well, in the Senate. And I I completely understand these rules and have adhered to the letter and the spirit of these ethics. Senator, rules. you mentioned your background. Your husband, as I understand, is the CEO of the company uh, that owns the New York Stock Exchange. Is there a conflict here since there were purchases that suggest that you've done well with some stocks, uh, like the teleconferencing that I mentioned, while we have Americans across the country who have seen their 401ks plummet? That's right. I mean, this is, this is where you need to know that when we acquired the New York Stock Exchange back when I was part of the company, we actually put the first set of rules in that prohibited discretionary trading. So no longer do my husband and I have the ability to do discretionary trades, and that's why it's uh, outsourced to third-party investment managers. And that's why I'm up here in Washington working for hard-working Georgian families and families across our country so that the American dream can stay intact. I've spent the last 10 days 24-7 mm -hmm. around the clock working to hear the stories of our okay. hardworking Georgians, waitresses, uh, hospital administrators, state and yeah. county public health officials to figure out what is needed. And I've advocated successfully to get that in the legislation that we're advancing today. Well, Senator, I, no I noticed that there was a spike in cases in Georgia overnight with the coronavirus. We're certainly thinking about your state and all the states around the country. Mm -hmm. Last question. Uh, you say that this was all above board. If the Securities Exchange Commission or other entities like the Senate Ethics Committee want to look at this. Are you going to cooperate fully? Absolutely. This is, uh, this is why I came to the, to the U.S. Senate to bring outside business perspective. I think people will have no problem getting access to anything that they have questions about, and I'm, I'm glad to take any questions at all today. Well, Senator, we appreciate you taking our questions, and again, we wish everyone in Georgia and around the country well. Thanks for coming in, Senator. Thanks, and God bless.
Well, Kelly, she is shaking in her boots right now. I will tell you that. She is going to get investigated, and the other senators who did it too, hopefully will be held fully accountable. Richard Burr, who heads the Senate Intelligence Committee, is accused as well as a senator from my home state, Dianne Feinstein, and senator from Oklahoma, James Inhofe. And I agree with Tucker Carlson on Fox News. Many people don't like this guy because he speaks his mind, kind of like Chico. Let's hear now. So you may have seen the news reports this afternoon. The chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee sold more than a million dollars in stock in mid-February after learning how devastating the Chinese coronavirus could be. He had inside information about what could happen to our country, which is now happening, but he didn't warn the public. He didn't give a primetime address. He didn't go on television to sound the alarm. He didn't even disavow an op-ed he'd written just 10 days before claiming was America was, quote, better prepared than ever for coronavirus. He didn't do any of those things. Instead, what did he do? He dumped his shares in hotel stocks so he wouldn't lose money. And then he stayed silent. Now, maybe there's an honest explanation for what he did. If there is, he should share it with the rest of us immediately. Otherwise, he must resign from the Senate and face prosecution for insider trading. There is no greater moral crime than betraying your country in a time of crisis. And that's appeared, that appears to be what happened. We'll have more on the story tomorrow. Yes, Tucker, we have senators who are literally betraying their country right in front of our eyes. And the president, he was asked about it and he couldn't even admit that we have a fully corrupt Senate, bipartisan, bleeding Americans 401ks while they make the moves based on inside information. If I may start, are you concerned about members of Congress that may have used information they learned on updates to sell stocks and profit off of this? I'm not aware of it. Uh, I saw some names, I'm not, I know all of them. Uh, I know uh, everyone mentioned uh, Diane Feinstein, I guess, and, and uh, a couple of others. I, I don't know too much about what it's about, but I find them to all be very honorable people. That's all I know. And they, and they said they did nothing wrong. I, I find them, the whole group, very honorable people. And you have Eric Trump, the Donald son, tweeting this on February 28th. In my opinion, it's a great time to buy stocks or into your 401k. I would be all in. Let's see if I'm right. Well, you were wrong. And what's a dash of insider trading among ghouls? Insider trading among the ghosts and ghouls? Yep, they are hitting them hard as a weekend news cycle began to show exactly what was happening. On Saturday, it was announced that Kelly's husband, Jeff, was accused by the SEC of insider trading. As we can see on February 26, suspiciously, the same day as Kelly, Jeff dumped over $3 million of stocks. And then once again on March 11th, after Kelly tweeted that over 15 million. And then scrolling down, you can see this isn't the first time for Jeff. He is a repeat offender going all the way back to 2015. I hope and pray for the sanctity of this nation that these senators are fully investigated and held accountable. At least give them the Martha Stewart. But our world is insane right now. And if cool Kelly gets off the hook, there is still a chance. When she tried to steal the Senate seat by just an appointment not being voted in, the people of Georgia fought back and forced a bill that would require her to be challenged in a May primary. And this may get delayed because of the virus, but this news will spread. And cool Kelly, you ain't gonna win. Cheers, I'll see you next time.